In a previous video, we talked about how your camera comes up with exposure settings. And we established that your camera is equipped with a light meter. And your light meter meters the light and comes up with those exposure settings. What we haven't talked about is how that light meter works and the fact that it has several different modes that you can set it in to fine tune how it meters the scene so it produces a properly exposed image for you. Chances are if you look around your camera's body you'll find a button that looks something like this which is used to control the different modes of your light meter. And sometimes it might not be placed on the body, there might be a menu option where you can access through your menu functions, but it should be very prominently placed because it's a very important function and it's used to control your camera's light meter. Now before we start talking about the different metering modes, the spot metering, partial metering, matrix metering and so on, I want to show you the principles that your camera's light meter is based on and how it works. Let's take a quick look at this example where we have this checkerboard design of equal white squares and black squares and they're all the same size. Obviously the white squares reflect light while the black squares don't. And if we shine a light on this scene, you might think that we'll get 50% of the light reflecting back because we have equal amount of reflective and non-reflective blocks and colors in this scene. But as it turns out, only about 18% of the light gets reflected off this scene here. This principle not only holds true with this checkerboard example, it also turns out that most scenes in the world reflect 18% of the light that is shined on them. So whether you point your camera at a scene like this or a scene like this, you get 18% of the light reflected back. And it's on this principle that your camera's light meter is based on. It assumes that whatever scene you're pointing your camera at is a scene that reflects 18% of the light and therefore produces exposure settings to create the proper tones and colors for 18% reflective scenes. As I just mentioned, this is true for most scenes in the world, but most doesn't include everything. So there are times when this assumption fails, and because you're pointing your camera at a scene that might reflect more than 18% or less than 18%, and your camera assumes that it's being pointed at something that is reflecting 18%, it doesn't hold true. That's why there's different metering modes on your camera, so you can adjust them for the different scenarios that you might be presented with. So let's take a look at the different metering modes and see how they work and what they do. When cycling through the different metering modes, all they really do is they change the area in the viewfinder that you want to have your light meter evaluate for exposure settings. So for example, on this camera, there are several different modes, and these modes are very common to all cameras. We have evaluative metering, partial metering, spot metering, and a center-weighted average metering. For evaluative metering, also called matrix metering sometimes, the whole viewfinder, the whole area is taken into account and exposure settings are produced based on that. If we move to partial metering, you're restricting the area that your camera looks at. It looks more of a center area and it creates exposure settings based on that. And spot metering is even a smaller area which is taken into account for exposure settings. And a center weighted average metering area looks at everything but it puts emphasis on the center of your viewfinder and creates exposure settings based on that. For most scenarios you can just leave your camera in evaluative metering, matrix metering mode and you should be fine. But there are times when you might have a backlighting situation where you get really bright tones in the background of your subject and if you try to take a picture of like a portrait shot for example like this you might get the subject's face darkened out and underexposed because matrix metering is evaluating the whole scene and it's picking up the overbright tones in the background, therefore being backlit. So that's when you want to target your light meter more precisely by using either partial metering or spot metering to expose the area that you want. So if we switch the camera into partial metering, for example, then it'll only be looking at the center part here which is the face of our subject for this portrait shot and it evaluates that for exposure settings and therefore creating the type of exposure that we want for this portrait shot where we have it where we have our subject backlit by all the ambient light in the background now you might be asking yourself is there some kind of exposure parameter or some kind of metering mode I can put my camera in so that I can capture the background as well as the foreground and the answer to that is no. As technologically advanced as these cameras are, the image sensors of these cameras haven't reached the human eye's ability to detect high dynamic range like that. There are workarounds in using flash or some kind of external lighting to light up the foreground so we get a balanced dynamic range throughout our scene. 
but we're going to get into that in a future video where we're going to use flash to artificially light our foreground. But that's it on uh, light metering and the different metering modes of your camera. I'll see you in the next video.